Hey guys, I wanted to go through today and just um, sort out some myths that are circulating, reference the colour light cards uh, and their capabilities when driving a large matrix. So you may have read that uh, the colour light cards can do eight panels wide by eight panels high uh, when using P5s. Um, and you may also have read that they can only do four panels wide by eight panels high. Um, so what's the truth and where do we go? So the answer is uh, both. Um, the colour light can do eight panels wide by eight panels high. Um, and of course it therefore can do eight panels high by four panels wide. So what's the question? Well, if we have a look at the specification sheet for the color light cards um, with hardware up to version seven, we'll see that the number of pixels supported at full refresh rate is 256 pixels wide by 256 pixels high. Now in P5 terms, that equates to four panels wide by eight panels tall. So divide our 64, uh, 64 pixels wide on the, on the uh, P5s, multiply that by four and we get our 256. Now, if we look at, we're checking the spec, it says 256 by 256, um, but it also says under special circumstances, it can do greater, uh, indeed up to 512. So what are those special circumstances? Well, the answer is refresh rate is the issue. So the color light hardware will do 256 by 256 at its maximum refresh rate. So that's gonna keep up nicely with our 40 frames per second. But if we run it at a full uh, eight panels wide or 512 pixels wide, it will slow the refresh rate down. Now, whether or not you notice, uh, it's probably, for a good question, you probably won't notice, your audience probably won't notice. Um, but if you really do want your best bang for the buck, then how do you fix that? How do you get the maximum refresh rate on um, a color light card with a matrix of uh, eight wide by eight tall, or indeed 12 wide by eight tall? So with the upgrades to Falcon Pi Player uh, FPP version four, we now have the ability to daisy chain color light cards to get the most out of them and to get the best possible performance out of your matrix. Now on the desk here, I've built a, a small demo rig uh, to show you what I'm talking about and hopefully explain it um, in LED vision and give you some ideas of what you want to be doing. So I've got here on the desk, I've got six panels, uh, six P5s, and I've configured them in three columns, two rows, and each column is running off a dedicated color light card. Complete and utter overkill for this, but it's demonstrating the principles. So each color light card can then run up to eight tall by four wide at its maximum refresh rate, giving you a theory, theoretical maximum of 96 panels in FPP, um, 12 panels wide by eight panels tall. Now, given that each of these is approximately one foot three, uh, 32 centimeters wide, you're gonna get a big matrix up to uh, 3.6 meters or about 12 feet in width um, by about uh, four feet tall. Um, so that's uh, 32, 64, about 1.3 meters tall. So that's the optimum. Um, let's see how we've got it wired. So we've got our signal coming in from um, our server. Uh, LED vision if you're running a uh, PC or FPP on a Pi. And as you can see, it's coming in on the yellow cable here into this first color light card. 
And then from there, we're running a second cable round to our second, and then a third cable onto our third. So we've got color lights one, two, and three. Now these are all version seven cards. Um, version 6.1s work just as well, and you can mix and match. So um, I did do some testing the other day with uh, a couple of version 6.1s and a version seven, and they all behave together just fine. Now I'm only using two outputs here on each one, so I'm running uh, channel one off each is running the top um, panel, and channel two off each is running the bottom. So we've got a complete build there, uh, ready to configure in LED vision. So let's go ahead and do that and get that set up. Having set up the hardware, we'll now go through LED vision and get that configured to uh, run the screens for us. So I'm using LED vision version five. Um, that tends to cover all of our requirements so we don't need to go for anything newer. Um, and I have had some issues with newer versions of the software uh, not quite behaving. So here we go, we've got a brand new setup of LED vision here. And let's get in and get it going. So on the side here is an example of the output that we should be expecting to see on the panels. Uh, at the moment we've got nothing set up at all, so we're not showing anything. So let's go in and set, get everything set up. Okay. Now I need to change from a sender card onto a network card. And at this point, the password is 168. Okay. okay, so we'll just do a detect. There we go, and our card has been detected. Uh, the three of them, so that's good. Now, first thing to notice is that our video output over here is a completely different size uh, to our panels here. So we need to set that up the same. To do that, we need to configure the width. In our case here, 192. It's our 64 pixels wide uh, three times. And our height is 64. So 32 pixels tall per panel. Uh, and we've got the two. So let's apply that. And we can see now that the LED output window is the same size as our uh, panels. Uh, and we've got some stuff appearing on here, not making a lot of sense at the moment, but that's that's fine. We've got some output. If I now go through the bottom of this window, uh, the count is one because we're running one matrix. X and Y just refer to the positioning of this panel on the screen. So we can drag the panel about to make it more visible and you'll see our X and Y move accordingly. Width and height we've just set, um, so we need to set that, we'll just double check those, 19264, and we can apply that. So we'll now go into LED screen settings, and the password again is 168. There we go. I'll detect receiver cards, lovely, and then we can go into screen parameters. So our box setting needs to be the same as uh, the settings we set earlier, so our full matrix size, uh, 192 by 64. And then I'll run through, I'll skip straight down to intelligence setting at the bottom, and set full color. Our width is 64, because our panels are 64 pixels wide. And then we'll just follow through the options. So display black and then we'll have display white and all of the panels should be coming on at this point and they are. One is darker than two so that sets a dim white and a brighter white and then it's just going to give us a color bar at the top for red, green and then blue and off Go. How many rows are lighting? So if we have a quick look, we can see we've got 16 lighting, uh, 16 rows are lit. 
And now how many rows? And we've now got one. Lovely. So now we need to populate the, uh, the grid here. And we start by clicking in the top left hand space and holding it down. And I'm now going to drag across with the mouse. Trying to go nice and steady to keep us in the line. So I'll get 32. If you, oh, I've made a mistake there. Look, I've jumped one. So we can simply hit back at the top. If we've made a complete mess of it, we can just hit reset. So I'll just go back one and then drag, a, continue dragging across. Lovely, and then I'll click across. And there we go, up to number 64. There we go. So that's the top row done, and you'll have seen that the pixels were populating going across as I did it. It's now asking for the second row, uh, and we don't need to drag every row all the way across. We can now click down the, the left-hand column. So if I click on row number two, and then drag, you'll see it populating until we get down to number 16. There we go, and that has now finished. And there we go, right, so we've got our panels now populating nicely. And if I just finish that, there we go. Our panels are now populated nicely, but as you can see, we're getting exactly the same uh, image across each column. And that's because the color lights are all doing exactly the same thing yet, but so far we haven't told it that there are three of them. So each one is doing the same. So I'm just gonna save this to receiver because that's telling each of the color lights uh, about the panels that it's got connected. There we go. And now we need to tell them that there are three panels, uh, three color lights. So we're gonna to go to the receiver mapping tab. And here we see just one color light is configured uh, with a width of 64 and a height of 64, which is right because uh, we've got each color light is controlling 64 by 64. So 64 wide by 64 high. Now to change that, we need to go across here to our column count and increase our column count to three. And there we go, that's our three color lights listed. Each of them has come up as 64 by 64. And we now need to just show it what order they're in, so which one's first. Now looking at it from the front, our, very, our first color light in the row is on the right here. So on the right, we'll click number one. We'll just click on it. And then we can click on... Um, and then we, yeah, we just simply click on number two and click again on number three. And you can see it says start, it's got an S for start, and then it goes across to E for end. So they're now configured, and we need to save that to the receivers for them to pick up the change. So all we need to do is to go down to the bottom here and save to receiver. Now before I do, when I clicked on each of these, it's got a height and a width. Uh, you can adjust that uh, if you click on the, uh, the panel, so it's got a red ring around it, you can change the width and the height uh, if you need to over on the right here. So just change it over there if I, may, if I needed that one to be 128, for example, I'll put 128 in there. And then you can see this one has got a height of 128. Uh, I'm just going to put that back to 64. I'll just click across. There we go. So they're all 64 by 64. Uh, and I'm going to save that to receiver. Now at this point, our color light should jump into place. There we go. It has. And our screen is now reflecting. Our matrix is now reflecting uh, the video on the screen here. So I could just come out of that. We did a save to receiver at the screen parameters tab. We've done another one from the receiver mapping tab. 
it's important that you do the save to receiver twice, uh, once from each tab. Um, otherwise, when you turn them off, uh, the color lights will get amnesia and you'll need to start again. So we've done both. We can now come out of this. There we go. And we've got our little video window here. And if I drag the mouse across, you can see that the mouse moves all the way across the screen. So there we go. So that's all configured and it's ready to go. Uh, we can now just confirm that it's doing what we expected uh, by putting something on it. Uh, if I expand this by going to a normal page and then I right click on it again and go to a file window. And if I now right click on the file window, I can add video uh, and I'm gonna go to a light fight and just pick a pick a video from there. There we go, and I can stretch that out. Get fired up for more Christmas! Ho, ho, ho. And see who's a cut above the competition! How many different cutouts do you have? 400? Wow! We can go back to the normal page, uh, right at the top here, and then just play it from there. And there you go, it's running with no borders or anything. Get fired up for more Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! And see... So that's our matrix configured. Uh, the color lights are all ready to go. Uh, from here, it's exactly the same setup in Falcon Pie Player, uh, as if you only have one color light card. So just remember when you're configuring uh, the panel outputs in FPP, that you are panels number one, two, three, from output one or output two, just the same. The fact that it's on multiple cards doesn't matter, so still select output one for your first row, output two for your second row, and then the panels in order, so panel one, panel two, panel three. Just the same, forget that you've got multiple color lights, um, it will just work just like that. So have fun, enjoy. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to let me know, um, either via below. Um, don't forget to like and share. Uh, find me on Facebook um, if you need to, uh, and enjoy. Good luck, have some fun.